Mitake Epi, my very, very beloved relatives of many tribes and nations and the human family. I really, really want to give thanksgiving to the great Statlium Nation, Chief and Council, Elders, and all members, Chief Daryl Bob and his beloved wife, Teresa, and all that have shared their sacred songs and ceremonies and have fed us and taken care of us for these past six years. Our wonderful Master of Ceremonies who have watched for six years stand here. And time after time, be so wonderful in his process of sharing. I want to give thanksgiving to the beautiful prayers of my Toshka, my nephew, Sundance Chief Reuben George, for the beautiful prayers he gave. For the sisters who came out here and, and gave us truth about those things that harm us, but yet uplifted us. I want to give thanksgiving to Mr. Crane Bear, who I've gotten a chance to know for many, many years since I was down, first went to Lethbridge in 1980. And those beautiful, profound words and the theme he began that was followed up by Leroy comes last. And that is this respect we have to have for our sacred Mother Earth. And the fact that the eagle has two wings, one is man and one is woman. And until both wings of that eagle have equal power and respect, the eagle of humanity will never fly as highest and reach the place that all our sacred prophecies have planned, have given us, have promised us. I also want to give thanksgiving, because I agree with Mr. Crane Bear that we stand on unsurrendered, unseated land right here. This is unsurrendered, unseated, and it was stolen with all due respect, as has happened everywhere on Mother Earth during this period of colonization of this last 500 years. But we must remember, too, that there's not one human being sitting in this circle whose ancestors have not gone through processes of colonization, going clear back to Darius the first, Darius the second, Attila the Hun, Genghis Khan, all those, including back, although they had a different way of doing it, to the Incas, the Mayans. We had different ways, much more loving ways of bringing others together in a circle. And so we know from the sacred prophecies, this is the time that this abuse upon Mother Earth towards women, towards other human beings, because they are different than we are, because of their skin color, or because of their spiritual beliefs, or because of their sexual orientation, or because they don't have the same material uh, status as others, or somehow they don't have the same educational level that this mainstream system says we're supposed to have. That time has come to an end. And we know from these prophecies that the foundation of the future, the organizing principle, is justice. Justice for every living being every living person and we know from that system of justice then we have the realization of the oneness of all life the oneness of humanity and once we understand we're one then comes the elimination of every form of prejudice every form anything that lets us feel better than or less than another human being because as this grandmother asked this question to me one day she said and i just been going to these ceremonies, I kind of began my journey back, I think I remember the day in fact, it was, it was uh, March 20th, 1968. I'm not saying, by the way, that that's been a perfect journey, because I know I've learned more from my mistakes than I have for any of my, my victories. But I remember going around and attending these various ceremonies and so forth, and we kind of can get a e egotistical about that. Well, I've been over this ceremony, I've been to this ceremony, I've been to that ceremony. So this grandmother asked me some years ago. She said, grandson, Takoja, she said, what is the most sacred ceremony of all ceremonies? And I began to recount these various ceremonies I attended. I'd gone to the sun dance and in Ikaka to renew a new breath of life in the, in the sweat lodge. Gone up to Hambriyachi, up to, up to fast 
went to Native American church ceremonies, went to longhouse ceremonies, smokehouse ceremonies, shaker ceremonies, various other ceremonies. And I recounted these with quite some ego. And then she looked at me and she says, you know, she said, Takwaja, those are all great ceremonies. But the most powerful, the greatest ceremony of all ceremonies is the birth of a child. Then she looked me straight in the eye and then she said, then who are you? Who are you? And what is the consummation? What is the ceremony that creates us? That's sacred as well. And that's what I heard being said over and over by the elders and the beautiful people that spoke before myself. That we are sacred beings and we must respect one another, but especially we will not stop the abuse of Mother Earth until we stop the abuse of women. <laughs> and Mitaki Epi, I'm also very thankful to see here uh, uh, the way the Statlium Nation has been a model over the past six years. There has not been one person that's ever come to this nation in the last six years this gathering has been on, there hasn't been something to eat for them. There hasn't been some real strong coffee. <laughs> Tell you what, you drink strong coffee here. <laughs> and they even have an outhouse here just for elders, thank God. <laughs> because you know our plumbing doesn't quite run as well when we get older. <laughs> so you need something like that. But I just want to really give thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And I want to say this too. That this new day has come that not only is all of British Columbia except they think seven or eight percent has been negotiated to the Canadian government that this is sovereign and unseated, I want to suggest to you that if we went across the United States and Canada across this hemisphere and we had the people themselves answer the question, have our treaties been honored? Have our treaties in the spirit and intent of our elders that went before us, has what they believe would happen, has that been honored? I believe the large majority of indigenous people and other relatives who have just as their heart, other human beings would say no. Therefore, I believe that the indigenous legal order is rising. And that's where I look for my guidance. So here, from I'm, as far as I'm concerned, and that's why when Dare Chief Darrell came up to speak, when he came and shared this with us, we stand here under the indigenous legal order of the Statlium Nation. This has nothing to do with the Canadian legal order. This is the Statlium legal order. And I believe the indigenous legal order is rising. And this indigenous legal order, I believe more human beings will embrace it than this current order in which we see the extremes of wealth and poverty. We see some people living with way, way more than they need and others in poverty. Two billion relatives on this Mother Earth do not have clean water, don't have a place to live in, nor food to eat. Two billion. Two billion people. And they are our relatives. They are and feel and love their children as much as we love our children. So the question comes, we know our sacred prophecies promised that after this long winter time we would come back. We would arise again. They promised clear before other relatives came here. And I want to give also some thought about the other relatives who came. If you go back and look at the history of Europe prior to 1492, and I had the chance when I turned 18, another friend and I hitchhiked across uh, North America from a little place called Walla Walla. We hitchhiked to, to New York and we hitchhiked our way on a freighter. Got a free ride on a freighter to Europe. I spent about a year looking around over there. I wanted to find out what happened. And remember, those relatives who came here, they didn't come here because they were living a great life. They didn't come here because everything was great. They were starving. They were oppressed. They had already gone through a plague because of the dirtiness and the fact they didn't understand how to be 
even to wash. They had lost one-third of the entire population. They had to face the Inquisition, where they burned people, burned up. Most of the people, by the way, were the people who had the traditional knowledge. And so when they came, they came, but with them came all those patterns that of their abuse were brought here. Because I believe Mitakiepi only abused people, abused people. Only abuse people, abuse people. Only colonize people, colonize people. And that is the patterns that we are now eliminating. So it's clear to see in our spiritual journey to the fulfillment of our sacred prophecies that promise without question that we shall become so illumined that we shall enlighten the entire human family. And although we may be a small group here, Gathered here are spirits beyond number, are here. You can feel it. You can see it. And so, where do we go from here? First of all, we know the foundation of any human being in any new world civilization, any tribe or nation, is justice and the spiritual foundation of compassion, kindness, forgiveness, Love, I've heard it over and over, love lasts forever. This is the foundation we're building. And without question, it is going to continue to be built. We can feel it here, we can sense it here, this sense of oneness. I feel it here this year more than ever before. People aren't looking around and saying, well, this person doesn't belong here, this doesn't belong here. We're all had a divine appointment to come here and to be here together. So as we look to the future, we have to also pray that we might receive from these spirits that are with us the visions of where we need to be in 50 years, where we need to be in 10 years. We know that it's not with these pipelines. We know that. And they shall not pass. I have complete faith in that. They shall not pass the Dakotas. The great Sioux Nation, they shall not pass there, the Keystone XL. This northern gateway pipeline, it shall not pass. Whatever the, our prime minister might say, and by the way, I want to give thanksgiving. Thanksgiving with all my heart and soul to our prime minister, Stephen Harper. Because in his unawareness, in his greed, he has awakened a sleeping spiritual giant. <laughs> This sleeping spiritual giant is awakening all over this hemisphere. All over this hemisphere. So I want to also give thanksgiving to all those relatives who have come here from our Spanish-speaking areas, Latin America, who are here. I think it's give them a little hand. And because Mitakiepi, I heard her elders say, we're all related. And the only difference between us and this hemisphere is that one oppressor spoke English, the other spoke French, another spoke Portuguese, and another spoke Spanish. That's all the difference there is. We are one human family. So I believe the future is about one part of it's about energy. And I believe, and I've been praying about this, one of the prophecies says, that we shall find on the surface of the air earth what we need to supply energy to the people. And I believe that energy is going to prove itself within 20 years. We're not going to have any more uh, gas eating automobiles. We're going, to have, we're going to have electric cars and they're already coming. I believe that power we've been given is the sun, solar energy. The natural forces of nature have been given to us to use in a good way. I do not believe they're hydroelectric power dams, by the way. Because we can see what's happening over time with those. I believe that we have the capacity. Because right here in this circle are... How many young people here are part of, of Unify? The group Unify. How many of the groups... Please, I'm going to see... How many are you into uh, to, to uh, 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 
building sustainable communities. Look around. How many of you are here about taking the garbage and transforming it back into something positive? It's here. There is technologies that are emerging on this Mother Earth that we need to watch for and seize. Well, the last thing I want to share, I've kind of gone on, I didn't know what I was going to say when I started here. <laughs> kind of, I realize I get carried away. It's, it's, it's because of the fact that before me, every single speaker inspires us. That's what inspired me. I sat back. You know, they said, well, Leroy has to do, do something. Want to wait? I said, I'd love to. And I realized with them going before, I'd learn more and learn more. So what little bit I had to share would, would uh, have something to, to say. But I believe this, that part of what it is that we need to really look at deeply as indigenous people and other human beings is this. If we collectively take all the resources we have across this hemisphere, all the assets we have, the land, the water, those minerals that we can sustainably develop without destroying the future, all the things, and not only that, all the money that individual tribes have, that these casino tribes have, and other tribes have, if we, but where do we put it? Where, are, where is all our resources? Where do we put the billions upon billions upon billions of dollars that if you went along the coast of the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, I mean Washington, Oregon, and California, or started with the Seminoles and went up the coast to the Miccosukees, up there to uh, Connecticut, and to the different places there, there's billions and billions of dollars. But where do we take and put all our resources? We put them in the very people's banks who are our oppressors. Just think about that. So I want to I want to throw this idea out here, this vision for the future. It'll probably maybe not be realized in my lifetime. But I truly envision, I know people have tried it, but the only thing holding us back from achieving anything we wish to do is disunity. That is the greatest disease of community is disunity. It's the jealousy. It's being jealous of a relative rather than understanding that the honor of one is the honor of all, that whatever good anybody does uplifts all of us. And that the hurt of anybody, anything of this creation hurts us. But I really believe in the future we're going to see the emergence of the indigenous bank of the Americas that will be there to support those things that are sustainable, those things that bring life, those developments that we want to do. Because despite how much money the Statlium Nation, for instance, puts into these banks that we don't control, and they make lots of money off us, my gosh, the once land claims came through, through, came through, CIBC, Royal Bank of Canada, every one of them started competing with each other to see who would take our money yeah. and control it. And you, but yet, go to one of these banks, you have a good idea. How many of them are going to give you a loan? How many of them are going to support us what we do? Because we live in a nation right now that subsidize petroleum. They give money to the petroleum companies. But if you have a solar project, you have a wind project, you have a thermal energy project, they tax you. Right now, for instance, the Chinese have, because they, they were smart enough, I'm not saying everything the Chinese are doing, they took, who nobody else would support in the United States, the best solar technologists in the world, they supported them, and now they have solar panels that are so cheap, they could fuel and change this whole planet face, face of the earth. But what happens? Canada and the United States put 249% tariffs and taxes against these solar panels. They could change things because they're so greedy for taking every bit of oil they can suck out of the ground, every bit of coal they can take and burn. They want it and it goes up as high as they can. Wow, why, why is it? While this is happening, all this other this, this he, upheaval is happening in other oil-producing countries. I believe there's more thought behind that, we realize. 
So me docky epi, I kind of went on for a while. <laughs> but I love you. I love you. Because love, love is what's going to take us there. It is not jealousy. It is not revenge. It is not carrying within us these feelings of shame and guilt for the many mistakes we've made. Because everything comes to us from the Creator for our own perfecting. It's like that song goes, It says, friend, for our white buffalo calf woman. It's our chief song. It says, friend, do it this way. That is, whatever you do in life, do the best you can. With all your heart, with all your soul. If you get knocked down, get up. And then it says, it implies in that song, if you get knocked down a thousand times, get up a thousand times. Because if you do it that way, the creator of all good things, all our ancestors who are all around us right now, are going to see you. And they're going to bless you. And then that song says, one must be responsible in the sacred circle when we sit together. One must be responsible. And finally it says, if you do it that way, with all your heart and soul and being, whatever you ask for, that's exactly the way it's going to be. And that's what we have to proceed with that faith and belief. So thank you so much. Again, our hands up to the great Statlium Nation who have shown us what true hospitality is to all humanity, not just to certain people, but anybody who walks in this land and honors the Statlium legal order. In our Dakota tradition, we end by saying, <coughs> my name, my names are Shukmano and Chinupasapa. My name is a sacred black pipe born of thunder, lightning, and rain. My name is a leader of warriors who stands, who takes the enemy's best horses. And I stand responsible before the Creator for my words and my actions. How? Oh.